Hello everyone, welcome to our first video. Today we are going to talk about software testing in general. We will first go through the agenda of today's presentation so we can see what we are going to talk about. So, we're going to talk about software testing, methods of software testing, and what are software testing techniques. What is software testing? Well, from the beginning of the software development, there was a need to test it. Developers did not have time to test their part of the application they were developing in detail, and even if they had all the time in the world to test, they would subjectively look at what they were developing and that would not lead to the real test results. Therefore, there is a need for training people whose entire focus will be on testing and who will look objectively at each part of the application and try their best to perform as many test cases as possible and cover as many cases as possible just like the end user would perform by using the actual software. We must be aware that comprehensive testing of the application is not really possible and it's not possible for many reasons. So it is important to cover as many important test cases as possible and not only that but to test the more important parts of the application. For example, if you have the application where you have some kind of transactions, so it's about the money, you have to test that carefully, or it's about some delicate data and stuff like that. So the definition of what the software testing is, and or which can be found in the literature, is next. Software testing is defined as an activity to check whether the actual results match the expected results and to ensure that the software system is defect free. It involves execution of the software component or system component to evaluate one or more properties of interest. Software testing also helps, helps to identify errors, gaps or missing requirements in contrary to the actual requirements. It can be either done manually or using automated tools. So we have two methods of software testing. Uh, one of them is manual software testing, and the other one is automation software testing. We have another question. What is achieved by software testing? Well, certainly better product quality is achieved, and that leads to a better product being delivered to a customer a more satisfied customer and greater benefit to the entire company. Why is testing important? It is isn't for many reasons, but one of the main reasons is that testing will maintain the quality of our software and we will not have to, it will not have a problem losing a client or any major problem that have occurred in history due to a poor or no software testing. It makes the software more reliable and uh, easier to use. Because um, when you test the application, it's not just that you compare what you have and what is required from the uh, client, but also sometimes to suggest some improvements, like to make it more user-friendly. Um, we go to another question, like how much testing is enough? Is, is there any measure for that? In fact, we can never say that we have to test our software enough. But it's important that software is with a large number of test cases that will cover as many main and secondary functionalities as it is possible and to cover as basic flows on our app. And since I'm mentioning the flow, uh, let me just tell you a bit about that. what is basically the flow. We can say that flow is a um, set of actions or steps, whatever you like, um, that a user should do in the application in order to do some functionality or feature of that application. For example, if you take uh, Facebook, 
application. So what do you have to do in order to log in? Log in would be one flow. And, and what do you do? You would have to go to the URL, www.facebook.com. You would have to enter your name and password and to click on login button. So that would be one simple flow. Okay, methods of software testing. As we already said, there are two methods, manual and automation testing. Manual testing um, is a type of software testing where testers manually execute test cases without using any automation tool. Manual testing is the most primitive of all testing types and helps uh, find bugs in the software system. That is the official definition of the manual testing. Uh, but still, it, and it's not important that it is the most primitive uh, type. It still, testers need to know all kinds of hacks and to have skills like logic thinking, uh, connecting stuff, and breaking down big picture into smaller parts, uh, investigating, etc. And what is also important, manual tester needs to have a domain knowledge about the application, so he would know how it should behave, and in that way to notice any undesired behavior of it. Manual testing is uh, really important in the process of software development itself, because uh, the right way of testing in the early stages will find bugs, and which is really, really important, and it costs much less to find it then, instead of finding it after, after when the development is already done. Now, you may ask, what is the goal of manual testing? Well, the key concept of manual testing is to ensure that the application is error-free and it is working in conformance to the specified functional requirements. Let's just mention a couple of terms when it comes to manual testing. What you will uh, hear very often is a test case. Test case is a set of actions uh, executed to verify particular features or functionality. So what do you do? You go step by step and write what is the action or the step and what is the expected behavior in that step. And when the test case is being executed, you go there step by step, and if all steps pass, that means the whole test passed. That's some kind of a documentation, if you like. Another thing that you're gonna hear, it's a test suit, and it's just um, one more thing that is designed during the testing phase, Test suit is a group of those test cases that are selected by some criteria. Uh, when talking about criteria, uh, it's not something that you have a rule for. It's actually a deal between the team members in your team. How do they organize their test cases? Do they organize it by some functionality or something else? Basically, testing checks the quality of the system and delivers bug-free, but when saying bug-free, I'm not saying 100% bug-free, but as much as possible bug-free product to the customer. And that is really important to know that it's not possible to deliver 100% bug-free product. Okay, let's talk about the second method of software testing, and that is Automation testing. What is it? Automation testing means using an automation tool to execute your test case suit. On the contrary, manual testing is performed by a human sitting in the front of the computer, carefully executing the test steps. The automation software can also enter test data into the system under test. It can compare expected and actual results and even generate detailed test reports. And those can be really useful. Test automation demands considerable investments of money and resources. Why automated testing? Well, automated software testing is important due to following reasons. 
Manual testing of all workflows, all fields, or all negative and happy scenarios is really time money consuming, as you can suppose. It is difficult to test for multilingual sites manually, but automation does not require human intervention. You can run automated tests unattended, like overnight. You can set some time when your tests will be run. And then you can see the report, how many of them passed, how many of them failed, and even the reasons why they failed. Automation increases the speed of the test execution for sure. So if you just think about it, when you manually do all the steps, especially when there are a large number of steps in some test case, and when it's done automatically, you can assume that this automatic way is way, way faster. Automation helps increase the test coverage and manual testing can certainly become uh, boring and error prone. So now that we talked about manual and automation testing, now we can sit down and try to see the basic differences between them as we already talked about. So manual testing requires human intervention for the text, test execution. So I, have, I, as a tester, I have to sit down, take step by step and do it and check, it, is it good or not? On the other side, automation testing, use automation tool to execute test cases. Manual testing will require skilled labor, long time and will apply high costs. And on the other side, Automation testing saves time, cost, and manpower. Once recorded, it is easier to run an automated test suit. As I mentioned before, you can schedule it for some time and it will do it without your inter intervention. Any type of application can be tested manually, but certain testing types like ad hoc and exploratory testing are more, more suited for the manual execution. And on the other side, automated testing is recommended only for stable systems and is mostly used for the regression testing, which we will talk about in some of the uh, other videos we're going to make. Manual testing can become repetitive and boring, as we already said, and here the boring part of executing same test cases over and over again is handled by the automation software in automation testing. And our subject is software testing techniques, which is like for today's video. Well, which are the two, uh, three actually techniques, black box, white box and gray box. In black box testing, tester does not have any information about the internal working of the software system. He doesn't need to know what is behind. That's what it's called black box, black, you don't see anything. Black box testing is a high level of testing that focuses on the behavior of the software. It involves testing from an external or end user perspective and it can be applied to virtually every level of software testing, unit, integration, system, acceptance. And we are going to talk about level of testings too in some of the next videos. White box testing is a testing technique which checks the internal functioning of the system, so opposite of the black box. In this method, Testing is based on coverage of code statements, branches, paths, or conditions. White box testing is considered as low level testing. It is also called glass box, transport box, clear box, or cold based testing. The white box testing method assumes that the path of the logic is a unit or a program is known. And the last one is gray box testing. That is a technique to test the software product or application with partial knowledge of the internal workings of the application. So it's a 
something between those two black box and, and white box test techniques. Now we can say what are the key differences between the black box and white box testing. When we come to talk about the usage, while well, black box testing is ideal for higher levels of testing like system testing, uh, acceptance testing, and white box, it is better for lower level testing like unit testing, integration testing. When we talk about the programming language you need to have in order to use those techniques, black box testing doesn't really require uh, program, programming knowledge and white box does. And who, who can test, who can use those techniques? Well, black box testing is perform, performed by the end user, developer, and tester. And white box testing is usually done by testers and developers. So, um, that will be all for our video. And in the next slide, you have the questions, like a little checkup quiz. So you can check yourself about what you have learned this time. And if you stop a video for a while, on the next slide, you will have all the answers. So you can check them. Thank you guys. That will be all for our first video. If you like, share and subscribe and go take a look to our other videos we prepared for you. Bye.